say it was a romance thing, exaggerated and so forth. And there was also a tendency to look down on it. It was primitive and so forth. So when you begin to see that it is not primitive, mm. but it has structures and has things, your respect for this thing in the world. And it came at a time when people began to be interested in recordings of music from Africa. Okay. There were a number of companies in Europe and they were who were doing recording. People were getting the recording. So books that gave the background mm -hmm. to this became important. So my music book of my book on the music of Africa in 1974. It was published. This is still on the market. Mm, 1974. 1974. By Norton. At that time, it was like a, a, a gamble. Mm. But it came out, it was well received, and then translations. And all. In other languages? Oh, yeah, in Italian, in German, in, in uh, Chinese, in, uh, in, in uh, Japanese. Oh. Mm. And so many things quoted. Oh, and it is still on the market from 74. Every year, you know, twice a year, every six months, they send me a little bit of royalty, you know, so it is still alive. Wow. <laughs> and what wow. I, well, that what I want to do is to perhaps print a Ghanaian edition so that it will be available to my students here. Mm -hmm. I wrote that book when I was professor at UCLA. I, I, was, I was given an appointment as a tenured professor at UCLA in 1969, mm. alongside my professorship in Ghana. Wow. So, yes, I, apart from uh, some of these national uh, contributions that you have made, had there been a time that uh, there was an appointment, a national appointment, to occupy a political office? No politics. That is the thing. I tried not to do it because this year was in the opposition, okay. part of the opposition. Roma University. And yet, you know, because of what I could contribute, they could come to me and ask me to do this for them. Mm. So I was independent of politics. And people recognized culture for what it was. So uh, sometimes, you know, when Chroma, it, it, it disappeared also. The military government that took, took, took charge came to see me to continue with my culture, you know. And I kept on getting, you know, you know, revenue grant, you know, from government, all the successive governments mm -hmm. you know, for culture. For culture? So, yes, for yeah. the institute. That's interesting. Yes. That means you won a lot of awards. Well, I've had, you know, I mean, in terms of the country, people know what I stand for. Uh, I mean, I have national awards and so forth. But uh, I, you know, politics is something else. Culture is something else. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, the thing that I have significant in terms of using culture to bring the people together, that is my area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so writing books, the books and I draw some drummers for children and uh, books in P and so forth and so on. So that's, that's my side. Yeah, yes, uh, that, 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 that was the time I had the opportunity of interviewing uh, Justice Crab, yes. one of the oldest civil servants we have right in Ghana. Yes. Uh, you know him quite well? Yes. And uh, I think he is also 86 yes. and he's still in service. Yes. Now, but, 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 why don't brains like you, like yourself, uh, just this crap, come together and then fashion the way forward for African leaders? Well, well, I, you know, I've been on several committees, international committees and so forth, and I know the limitation. Mm. You know, I know the limitation. I'm a member of the uh, Ghana Academy of Arts and Science. I'm a foundation member. Maybe, maybe. 59 when it was set up by Nkrumah. You know, I was you know, a young person, but I was a you know, member. And I've been a member since you know, the Ghana Academy Foundation. That is an area where I could make a contribution. But the Academy 